thank you mr chairman i think the microphone is actually working i want to thank the witnesses um you've just been absolutely tremendous uh, i'm from minnesota and uh, so of course uh canada is neighboring and uh, we of course see anecdotal evidence all the time of canadians um coming to minnesota because we actually have a male clinic there too i i'm not sure why you travel all the way to arizona um <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean, okay, that's all right. I, I, uh, but, but we have a male clinic in Rochester, Minnesota that is world famous. Um, and you chose to come to a male clinic. You could have chosen, frankly, to come to several hospitals in Minnesota or other states. And Mr. Baker has given us examples of hospitals around the country where Canadians have gone. Uh, you, you did that because you needed to, you had to, and you could. You could do it. I, I think that the the phrase that uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Baker said that uh, the U.S. is the Canadian system of last resort. It's a place you can go. And so I, I'll start with you, um, Ms. Robertson Holmes, if I could. If the United States were to adopt a system like Canada has with a government-run health plan that operates like that, do you think that the Mayo Clinic in Rochester and other would still be able to provide services for you and other Canadians? Well, I'm not sure that that would continue to happen. I think that it would. Um, I, I don't see where what the where the need would be on 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 either side. And I and what I think is that if Americans then needed a place to run, if your facilities are now completely uh, bogged down and and backed up and and mirror the system at which we have, would Canadians be able to then turn around and be able to help Americans that couldn't get any help? And I think that we would become neighbors with the same problem and no solutions. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure how the microphone switching back and forth is going to work, but I think this one is working again now. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Baker, uh, you did leave us with some thoughtful and, and terrifying quotes. Um, the, the quote of the doctor to Lynn of, quote, you have not yet suffered long enough. I wonder how one determines when one has suffered long enough. And, of course, we, I think, are very much afraid that if you have a, a bureaucracy that's making that determination, that you, you will have um, many people suffering for a very, very long time. Let me uh, move very quickly. Uh, again, Mr. Baker, you are, you're providing a service. You're entrepreneurial. You've got a program here. You've seen a need. And, and Canadians are actually being referred to you by concerned physicians that say, I, I, I've got to get help for my patient. That's so correct. You, and so you're providing a service. And, and I've heard, as we're trying to catch up on what the Canadian system does, that there, the Canadian government may actually try to create something that would compete with your services. Is, is, is well, that right? Uh, if they did create something, I, I've said many times that I feel blessed in, in operating my business that my major competitor is the government. <laughs> because who cannot succeed in business if their only competitor is the government? And listen, my competitor offers the same product that I do, but they don't charge for it. It's, it's absolutely free. I charge for my service, and yet people still come to me. What kind of an indictment is that? of our system if people willingly pay for a, a product, a service that's free in their own. Well, I think it's a pretty clear indictment. I just uh, have a, a comment and perhaps uh, one more question so we can move on. I've got a sure. lot of colleagues that are waiting here. We've seen uh, clearly when we were marking up the legislation and education and labor and, and talking to our colleagues and talking to uh, businesses back in Minnesota that the small businesses, the small business owners and, and, and employees there and those who have started to look at this uh, realize that, that the bill payer here is going to be um, overwhelmingly placed in the hands of, of small businesses. And so, Ms. Kerrigan, you, you gave some very good testimony. Uh, what, what is it that you would say from the small business perspective? What is it small businesses really want to happen here? What do they want in the way of fixing health care? Well, it's very obvious. They want their, their health insurance 
costs to go down or at least to stabilize. Um, those who don't provide insurance, either for themselves or their uh, employees, want access to affordable coverage. Um, and, and I think there's, there are solutions uh, that have moved through the Congress previously and that have been proposed that will help them do that. I mean, certainly there um, uh, is, uh, is the pooling um, uh, that has moved uh, through the Congress previously that would allow small business owners to pool as a group and, and leverage their numbers so that they can negotiate better prices and, and uh, have more choice of plans. Um, there is, um, on the tax side, there are tax credits that can be offered, I mean, both to individuals and to business owners. Um, the uh, tax code can be fixed for the self-employed with respect to um, tax parity. Um, we can open up uh, uh, the um, health insurance market on a nationwide basis. Um, you know, small business owners in some states are just locked into the insurance market in their states, and it's very, very expensive in some states, in New York and New Jersey, et cetera, where they have excessive mandates, and that, um, uh, you know, is, is a barrier to coverage for many business owners. So certainly op having a nationwide market, a true nationwide marketplace, not something run by the government, um, I think um, that makes total so sense. More choice, uh, more competition. And I just think some very simple, targeted reforms uh, without taking over the whole system and making small business owners pay for it. So, Thank you. You sound just like a member of the Republican Health Care okay. Solutions oh, Group. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, uh, those are the, exactly the discussions we've been having. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank all of you. I yield back. Uh, Mr. Ryan.